Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we try to deliver the best Linux news in under 30 minutes or more, guaranteed. And this week, Lightbook releases a brand new Linux laptop from 2014, and Munich is definitely switching back to Windows, probably, well, mostly. Stallman approves some hardware, and we question its usefulness, and Razer acknowledges Linux, and acknowledging was all they did. NASA releases a bunch of software in case you're into building rockets and stuff. And Solus gets it right once again, this time with Optimus support. It's going to be brilliant. Let's just get right into this uh, about the NASA thing, man. Indeed. Yeah, tell me about it. So I saw this uh, bit of news earlier in the week. Science Alert uh, posted an article saying that, hey, NASA just released a bunch of its software for free. And it is very much uh, for free. It's not free software, although uh, Strider will let you know about a little bit more about that. Now, uh, if you go to the uh, download page, you will see that there's a bunch of different software available, and most of it actually has a working Linux version. So, hey, good on NASA. They, they, they're, they're usually pretty good with sharing their tools and their stuff and everything that they develop, unless it's heavily, heavily proprietary stuff. But they try and steer clear of most of that. They do most of the software. They'll cherry pick bits and bobs from all over the uh, the software ecosystem, but they mostly develop everything themselves. Strider? Yeah, so this is interesting because they have actually two software repositories. And that one contains some non-open source software. Mm -hmm. But they, they also have another website, which is code.nasa.gov. And here, pretty much everything is open source, even mm. the website awesome. itself. So this is, this is where I'm mostly interested because most of the software is some heavy like scientific stuff or related to building rockets and stuff. But the website, uh, it's built with the Polymer framework, which I use. So I, I like having like a production ready website I can look at. Uh, I couldn't look at the source code and everything. That's neat. No, I was definitely taking a look at it. And I, I had a uh, good chore tool, if you will. So unless you're building a rocket or an aircraft and you back it, it's like, uh, <laughs> As part of the hybrid rocket engine, um, annoying the crap out of my neighbor's master race. Yes, I have done that more than once. Very neat, very good for them to give back. But about that laptop, Lightbook, Ooh. 249 Linux laptop, not a Chromebook, a laptop, mind you. Too good to be true. Uh, if your answer to that is, oh, dear flying spaghetti monster, that's a shoop job right there. We're just <laughs> going to have to get right that's in. some great school shooping that, level that, there. That, that, that very fancy cup. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that, that's definitely a thing. But no, the, the, okay, this is going to be 1920, 1084 gigs of RAM installed with elementary OS. And pay $20 more for a version with a 32 gigabyte M status all this day. Oh, all right. Um, uh, coming in at 14 inches. That's not necessarily a bad price, is it? Uh, it's... No, it's uh, it's quite a good, good deal um, for... For that price, you get a full HD display. You get, I mean, the CPU is a bit weak, but it's what you would expect for that price range. Yep. Uh, and it's a good choice of an OS. I mean, four gigs of RAM, it's, uh, it's a bit small, but I mean, you can get yeah, stuff done. Yeah, minimum of eight nowadays. Come on. Yeah, but I mean, it's only 250. So, yeah, I mean, it doesn't look bad, but I, I think you could get a better laptop if you go on eBay and just get a used one. Um, no, it's it's interesting. The, the only thing that troubles <laughs> so me bad. is it's it doesn't have a backlit keyboard. So Yeah, that's, and that's uh, a if we are to compare, let's face it, 250, you're basically in Chromebook territory and there are, for 250, neither, I don't think any of the Chromebooks, that's a motorcycle outside, uh, any of the Chromebooks actually have a um, a backlit keyboard. That said, while we're on the Chromebooks, this would have been a great price point if, you know, Chromebooks didn't have access to a lot of Android apps, which makes it a much 
much better deal proposition than uh, just running uh, basic Linux. Know, on, on Chromebooks, you don't have the, the Ubuntu apps. Oh, man. What a tragedy. <laughs> uh, no, you uh, tried with that one strider. Yeah, in you in a way, though. I mean, that, that is one way Linux has um, taken a little bit of share of the actual desktop market with Chrome OS. Yeah. But, I mean, looking at this, um, yeah, if you, on your order page, if you have two just <laughs> horribly shooped images and you don't have an option to add another SSD, you have traditional spinny driver hybrid storage, and you can kind of max that out. I, I'm just buy with caution. Maybe, maybe we can get one in to look at. But you know, um, you expect what you pay for. But Wait. that's not the only hardware we have this week. Yes, this week uh, the uh, Vikings GmbH uh, are now offering FSF certified uh, hardware for sale. You can get a motherboard, a um, sort of a streaming stick, what have you. Uh, you can get a laptop and a server. So that's, no, no it's actually not a streaming stick. It's a, a, an actual full-fledged um, workstation desktop. Oh, that's neat. But yeah, you can get all of these bits of software. Um, um, what the hell uh, does FSF stand for? I forgot. Free Software Foundation. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> my brain it's not working today uh yeah so the free software foundation have basically said no these are properly open sourced quote unquote uh hardware and you can get them uh, the um the x200 uh laptop is it's basically the same one you can find all around uh just uh, shop around for it but with the difference that it comes with libre boot so that's good the uh, the workstation desktop it's a bit expensive, a little bit could have probably, but I guess that's the price of freedom since these aren't exactly mass produced. I don't know, man. I was and, told uh, freedom was bucko five. Uh, yeah, no, apparently not. But seriously, the um, the ThinkPad X two hundred for three hundred euros that they actually have the prices in euros. Uh, you can get one refurbished. Right here in Portugal, down the street for two hundred, uh, and all you need to do is spend like uh, thirty minutes figuring out how to load Libra Boot into it, and then just installing Triskel. I don't yeah. know. I mean, I think this is a neat project, and you know, some people don't want to DIY, and it's like, what? You want to charge me, you know, six euros for installing Linux? Okay, I guess that's a thing. But um, uh, definitely one question I have. Like half joking, half serious. So, what Libre friendly CPU do these critters support? Open Spark or Leon? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So, if you look at the uh, FSF article, they, they mainly talk about the motherboard, uh, the ThinkPad, and the sound card. You know, it's it's a, it's a really cheap uh, USB sound card. Um, it's an unlikely combination. I mean, you got this like massive dual CPU server grade motherboard and then you have this uh, ThinkPad which is getting kind of old now the, the X2 200 that's getting a bit old, old now and that sound card I mean okay that's good I mean okay I'm, I'm fine it's with this they, they, they are fine. not they are not the first company to sell uh, refurbished uh, ThinkPads with Libre Boots or Core Boots on it I've seen that before. I, you know, I definitely get why people want to do stuff like that and these types of devices. Um, more power to them, but I've never actually seen one in the wild. So, hey, uh, check it out. All that business will be in our show notes. But um, Torval strikes again. So yeah, so we have a, a new kernel uh, cooking. Like uh, it's, uh, we already have the release candidate one. And and some people they they just don't understand. I mean, <clears throat> don't they know about Linus Torvalds how he deals with crappy code? He's a teddy uh, bear, <laughs> and, and they keep like uh, trying to to stick in like poor quality code. And apparently they they sent, I don't know. He didn't name the the, the people who sent like poor quality code, <laughs> but apparently right, there is a win. <laughs> It didn't. It didn't even build. 
So he said, okay, if you're not going to respect the, the process, you're going to be shouted out and this is going to be bad for you. And he says that uh, he knows who those people are and this uh, will not go on anymore. No, I mean, 4.11 is interesting. I'm still pondering moving up to 4.8, but um, cover your ears because I'm about to say 4.11 does not bring any real performance with Ryzen, to which Pedro <laughs> shall retort. Yeah, yeah, no. Uh, the the biggest thing, and I saw sort of a podcast with a couple of different people, some of which were Linux users and uh, others were Windows users, and they were talking about the biggest thing that seems to make a difference performance wise when it comes to Ryzen is the uh, scheduler, the OS scheduler. And um, unless the uh, default Linux kernel starts shipping with the uh, BrainFuck scheduler, I'm sorry, that's what it's called, uh, enabled by default, I don't see too much of a performance improvement in the near future. Mm. So it remains One thing to be I'm seen. thinking about this is reading through it, the, one of the quotes, you know, um, Lydus is, is like, yeah, you know, I'll allow this one too. And I'm like, Torvalds, man, you get a little soft in your old age. Come on, that, that, that's not the guy I know, the shouty, cussy, yeah, ranty he guy. Sort of went soft, but then the, like the very last paragraph before before he lists all of the uh, incoming changes, he says, "You people know who you are. Next merge window, I will not accept anything even remotely like that. Things <laughs> haven't been in the Linux next. Uh, things that haven't been in the Linux next will be rejected. And since you're already on my S list." You'll get shouted at again. Mm, yeah. So, yeah. That's a little <laughs> forewarning. So the story that changes depending on what day it is. Um, FSFB. <laughs> what happened in Munich? Um, they kind of go through. This is a very big wall of text. And I kind of read through it. it. Ultimately, what they've said is, you know, you got until 2020 to get off of Limex and pull a summer. During this transition, you know, you can continue using Limex, but... Uh, Want to get this? Uh, the administration shall, without delay, propose a strategy how to unify the city's client side IT architecture by 2020 1231, building on a yet to be developed Windows based client. Baseline functionalities that are looking for word processing, spreadsheets, presentation software, PDF reading, email client, web browser, even on that Windows based client, can be accomplished with open source solutions. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, um, it's not looking good, Brad. Yeah, no, I hope they'll enjoy pay, having to pay a metric F ton of uh, licensing fees on top of everything else that they already have to pay for since they're changing the infrastructure yet again. That's the kind of brilliant decision making that drains municipal coffers. Mm -hmm. So uh, what seems a bit strange is that the FSF doesn't really have anything to win here but they do uh, take this matter quite seriously. Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, Le Munich could switch to Windows and the, the FSF could say, okay, we'll let you do that, who cares? But no, they are really taking this seriously. And, yeah, and because want... Munich was always regarded as sort of the poster boy for Linux adoption in like uh, big city management infrastructures. And now that uh, poster boy is basically going, maybe we should go back to Windows. Yeah, I don't Why? know. Why? You're, you're looking at, I can see Microsoft going, you know, it's like, come on. But if you're looking <laughs> at 2020, let's be realistic with each other, gentlemen. By that time, if Microsoft has any chance, you're, they're going to be dealing with the Windows cloud solution. Mm -hmm. So, what's, what's <laughs> the and the point? internet goes down, and no one can use the infrastructure. Woohoo! Oh man! <laughs> well, what, I, what I think went wrong here is that they they did too much of uh, not in, invented here uh, syndrome. Uh, I mean, they they almost built their own distro and they mm -hmm. built their own stack of software, and that's that's uh, takes some work to maintain. Yeah, so that if was they the just problem. had it, it gone wasn't with properly stock, maintained. If they, they had gone with stock software, uh, it would have been much easier. And this probably they, they may may not be having to switch to Windows. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. I don't know. We'll, we'll probably cover it again in two weeks, and it'll be something <laughs> different. Okay, um, Razor. Well, what Razor have basically. All they did was they grew tired of people asking, look, 
we bought a razor blade laptop and we want to run linux on it and you guys don't support it and we're kind of in the dark as to how the firmware and the hardware sort of interact with one another and we want a software solution to make it work so they created the linux corner in their forums um they also said that uh, they will look at improving uh, Linux support in the Razer Blade uh, series of laptops. That said, don't uh, expect Linux to be an option for when you go to a store or to the Razer website and you buy a new Razer Blade, that it will have a uh, Linux option as the OS. That probably won't happen. Just saying. Uh, now... Admittedly, and this is kind of my own personal thing, I've always been interested in the Razer Blade laptops because the teeny tiny LCD screens and every single key on the keyboard, the uh, touchpad that's actually a touchscreen, and uh, the hardware slash firmware support that gives you the ability, and it's inherently set to give you the ability to rebind every single key and trackpad motion, and it's all already baked in. That's that's something that's always left me curious, just not 1,100 euros curious. Yeah, so I was reading this at first and thought, oh, well, yeah, it made sense because it's a sub-company of Dell. But no, I was thinking about <laughs> Alienware. <laughs> so no, I mean... It's Different gaming see... laptops, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're both gaming laptops. But it's good to see uh, another unrelated company the to to kind of support uh linux so even if they don't sell linux laptops they will make sure that it runs well and, and provide some some kind of support so that's good mm -hmm. well that's definitely i think before we started the show Popey said he talked to them at um scale mm -hmm. and but um i was like hey, we're thinking about it the cynical part of me that's alive and all right that i would be better off saying the i all of me cynical Sorry, um, read this, you know, and they come through and they're like, okay, we, we have a new thing on the forums, the Linux corner. It's all great and fun. And uh, it's like, Razor, are you, are you trying to tell everyone to quit bugging you about Linux support and just kind of get them all over in one form out of the general population? Yeah, <laughs> feels like you're getting yeah. rounded up. I don't know. I hope it works out. Yeah, I'm kind of with Pedro, um, the yellow swag Dorito, flashy LED stuff. I was like, no, even like my 980 had like a glowing thing. It was like, nope, cover that up. Can't deal with it. <laughs> but the more, the merrier for Linux. And I, I hope yeah. this is a very positive, legitimate foot forward to say, okay, we're, we're open to supporting this. Mm -hmm. And and um, people keep saying that uh, Steam machines are dead. But I, this is better, in my opinion. It's... It, we don't need really uh, Steam machines. We need uh, hardware that supports Linux really well. And if you want to install Steam on it, or st even Steam OS, then you go that you go do that. And but Steam machines is we don't need them really. Well, we, that's we a discussion them. for another time. Also, PSA kids, don't install Steam OS on your laptop. Yeah, it's just a headache you don't want to have. So <laughs> up next, while we're on the gaming. Um, Ethan Lee kind of poked me. Uh, well, he didn't poke me directly. He just uh, shared this on Twitter. And I was like, oh, that's neat. That sounds like a Lutris thing. And apparently it was. This is the SDL2 gamepad tool that the fine folks at General Arcade have been developing for a while. There's a new version out. And I figured what better time to actually give everyone an introduction about it. And you can download, you get some Debs, you get some Tar GZs and some Zips. You also get a Snap package for some reason. Uh, <laughs> but it's available for download and the um, the sauce is open. So you can go to their GitHub and have a look at uh, what they're doing. And it's basically what this does. It's very similar to what uh, SC Controller does with the Steam Controller. Except you can do this for every single controller that SDL2 supports. Which, let's face it, I don't even know just how many controllers it supports because it supports a lot of them. Like, a lot, a it lot. So every lot game it. every game that uses SDL2, you can set this and you can enable it and remap all of the controls to just about anything you want, basically. Yeah, this is very, some very good stuff and... I, I might 
find myself like taking a bunch of their source code and transferring <laughs> it to Lutris because at some point we might we want to have something similar to this for Lutris. Mm -hmm. um, what bugs me a little is that it's only for SDL2 games. So, yes. for example, I, I don't know, maybe say Wine. I'm not sure Wine is using SDL2 yet. So this might be an issue. Okay, that's yeah. a thing. We are running low on time. So tell me about this Optimus support. So, yeah, so uh, Optimus, this has been an issue for years. <laughs> not No one is getting it right, but there you have Solus. Uh, it's a new distro. It hasn't been around for uh, very long. It's basically a one-man project. And they are starting to ship a working um, Optimus implementation. So it's not finished yet. Right now, it will mm -hmm. only uh, use your NVIDIA GPU and not let you switch between your NVIDIA and Intel CPU. Actually, it does let you switch between the two, or uh, depending on which uh, application you're running. The thing is, and that was always like the big sticking point, is the ability to turn off the discrete NVIDIA GPU and leave just the, um, the integrated uh, Intel IGP just leave that one on. Now, the way this works, you can still use the different GPUs between the two, between applications, but the discrete GPU is always on, so it's still yeah, draining it's power. So that's not 100% there yet, but it's a start. It's a start. It's a good start. It's a better uh, job than like most distro ha have done yet, so good on them. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and it's going to ship soon with that on-demand uh, GPU switching. Mm -hmm. uh, th this is some, I mean, Solus, they, they keep doing things right. And this bugs me because the, all those bigger names like Red Hat or Canonical or, or SUSE, they, they, they have like good distros, but they don't tackle the some issues that have been here for years. And they keep like saying, okay, we'll run... Uh, our phone on uh, our OS on a phone, or we'll make like some kind of new packaging system. <laughs> but no, why don't you Snaps. fix the? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why don't you fix the real issues first, and then you can care about running your OS on a phone or st stuff like this. Okay, that's definitely a thing. Um, I use tablets nowadays because I'm old and I anger and confuse easily. Pedro, um, do 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 we gotta do an ad? No, no, we don't, because oh. there are a lot of awesome people paying us wet, stinky caches every single week to make sure we remain independent and ad-free. Well, I mean, we're, I know, personally speaking, I'm kind of a shill, so if you throw free stuff at me, I might plug your stuff, but it's not an ad. It's just a plug, okay? Right. So if you would like to, say, provide us with some wet stinkies, you can go to linuxgamecast.com, you hit the support button, and you have different options. You have the Patreons, the uh, Amazon affiliate links, and the one-time PayPal donato buttons. If you're going to have a recurring donation, please, oh, please use Patreon. It's easy enough. It's about as hard as the regular uh, PayPal one. There are currently 98 Patreons. Woohoo! At $177 a week. Thank you all very, very much. And uh, we also have to thank a uh, very, very nice couple who decided to print out some flyers and uh, basically plug our stuff at the uh, Southern California Linux Expo. Thank you, Jill. Thank you, Steve. Thank you very much. Yeah, and I, I still have the uh, some flyers from Scale. Uh, see those flyers? Yay, there they are. <laughs> that, that, that is genuinely <laughs> horrifying. No, um, that's beautiful. I want to thank everyone, um, especially because, you know, without Patreon... This show would not exist. This show is, was, and still is a Patreon goal. So you've been allowing us to do this for over a year. If you're new to the show, we got a lot of bunch, a lot of bunch. Englishing not yes. very good. Well, <laughs> um, a lot of new viewers that are coming in. You've been thinking about it. You know, kicking us four quarters a week. That would be brilliant. And we're not asking for much. Just any extra jingle and the jingle you have laying around. Now that worked me up into a bit of a hunger. So how about some pie? Yes. Coming up first is um, something that I even read and said, that's a bad idea. Um, 
No, uh, Dr. Lucy Rogers, she writes, you know, Lunar New Year celebration coming up, however, fireworks, such as small explosive firecrackers, have proved to be so dangerous, they're banned in many countries, including Britannia. <laughs> so I decided to make some firecrackers uh, with a raspberry pie using, let's see, what, whatever we had here at the bottom. Raspi, um, NeoPixel Control, and NeoPixel Electronic Cigarette. I'll get back to that in a minute. Um, aquarium Mini Air Pump USB Audio Adapter SD Card. Bunch of things here. It, it's a very well put together piece of kit. There'll be a video link in the show notes. I mean, it makes noises and it smokes. But the one thing I saw here is to produce that smoke that you're seeing, if you ever go back and watch the video version, using an electronic cigarette. Inside an electronic cigarette, um, you have these things called lithium ion batteries that will melt your face <laughs> off. Okay. This, this thing right here has two 18650s. This Vapotron 9000. This is a grenade is what this is. They are very dangerous. Do not. I cannot recommend. This is coming from me. Captain likes to electrocute himself unconscious. Um, don't go digging around in any cigarette. That's just a general bad idea. Maybe look up how to make some homemade firecrackers. This is neat, but way too dangerous for anyone. Even if you, I, I just know lithium ion batteries. <laughs> I mean, it's great terrifying. if you have a bunch of capacitors just lying around and you want to get rid of them. Sure. <laughs> Light them all on fire. <laughs> No, what I find funny is that it comes from one of the IBM blogs. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I don't know what's the what the the link to IBM is, but I mean, I, I guess maybe is, like as a pro tip, if you're going to go digging around with um inside of um Epen, do it with like these two sets of fingers. So when they get blown <laughs> off, at you least you'll always claw. be throwing the goat, man. So you, you'll definitely be yeah. good. Okay, let's talk about the thing that no one can get. And how do no one can it? get. I mean, I know I have a friend who did get one, so they're they they exist. So this the, the Raspberry Pi Zero W came out a couple of weeks ago, and there there are already some hacks. Uh, this one is to attach an external antenna uh, for the Wi-Fi, so you get more power uh, for your Wi-Fi and more range and stuff. So yeah, that, that that's a, a cool thing. Uh, it it involves some soldering uh, and some pretty like um, you you have to deal with like very small components. So if you want to try it try it out, be very careful with uh, what you're doing. It's definitely it's a fun thing. And I was looking through and I was about to say something negative about the soldering skills until I remembered how small that thing was. I was like. Yeah. Good, good, good <laughs> job. Do keep in mind, um, this will invalidate the FCC certification, but I seriously doubt anyone listening to the sound of my voice cares about that. <laughs> no, no one cares. No, no. And let's face it, if you want to set up a bunch of uh, embedded wireless devices and you want to use the Raspberry uh, Pi Zero W as a base, yeah, that antenna is going to help signal a lot, like very, very much. So, mm -hmm. hey. It's a good job, and uh, yeah, the um, the moving the resistor and the um, the antenna welds look bad, but the moment you zoom out, they look pretty spot on. So, if you'd like to get in touch with us, if you think we said anything that was even remotely uh, wrong, inaccurate, what have you, or you just like to leave some feedback, you can go to LinuxGameCast.com, you hit the contact button, and you fill out the form. Make sure to pick LWDW on the little drop-down menu. Uh, it's easy enough. So, this week, what do we have when it comes to feedback? Oh, it's Renee. I butchered his name last time. Well, you know, uh, he writes in Strikor, <laughs> Debian testing and stable have had Firefox ESR for nearly four to six months now. There's a link, and we'll get to that in a minute. The Ice Weasel package has, for the longest time, been a meta package which pulls in FFESR. I've, I've, okay, I am. Let's just say we're going for that one running Debian testing on my laptop and work desktop for the last two plus years. The newsy bits that finally I stuff. Yes, Vin. Hi, hi. Um, somebody <laughs> actually uses that um, thanks to corporate's use of exchange. Uh, okay, I feel on that one. <laughs> it's, it's getting the same treatment. Debian's QA modifications repackaging are um, now been allowed by the Mozilla Foundation, which is due to some gray area in the MPL licenses about redistributing 
compiled from source copies for Firefox and TV that could be a violation on the Mozilla trademark finally <gasps> has been sorted out. Okay, Pedro, if you read yes. watch um, Linux Weekly Daily Wednesday's GPL decline, your second try on my family name was close. The Danish language is a biznitch for non-native speakers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that tends to be true for many, many languages. I guess English is the one that most people uh, get the most exposed to, so it always ends up being easier. But uh, Danish, yeah, no. I mean, outside of the pastry, I never really had any. Mm. <laughs> this is mostly directed to you. So, so first, Renee, how, how have you been since Kale? <laughs> um, so, <laughs> nice, nice, nice meeting you. And okay, so the the thing about this Firefox and Thunderbird in Debian is they're Debian, so they will do their best to ship with old software. So they ship with Firefox ESR. So that's not something I would like to have for a browser. And this is the reason. I, if I did run Debian, I would still run the. Uh, so I would still use the Mozilla repo because. I like having my Firefox up to date and not using a uh, like, stale uh, uh, stable no, version yeah. that they pack. Yes, especially for web developers, that's important because you get a bunch of new features for uh, like shipping every six weeks. And if you do some web de development, you might want to try out the new stuff, and so so people can use them like in a year or two. Mm -hmm. So yep. All right. That yes, that about edition. wraps us up. Yes. Um, hey, thanks, beautiful people, uh, for joining in, listening to what we find interesting and what's going on. Um, like Pedro said, if you know some interesting things, send them our way so we can converse about them in our own special mishmash of um, just madness that we like to call Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays. But if you ever want to get in contact with me on the Twitter nuts, I'm at Vinstone. Or just plus, um, Vinstone on the G plus is when it's working. <laughs> I am Pedro Mateos. You can also find me at unaccounted for on Twitter, and uh, please don't try and find me on the uh, Google Plus um, app on Android because that don't work so well lately. But on the uh, regular old browsers, I am plus Pedro Mateos. And I'm Matthew Commando. You can find me on Twitter at Strikor or on Google Plus. Uh, plus Mathieu Commando, or you can also check out Lutris, which had a uh, release yesterday. So check it out and support the project. No, it didn't. Want. It's dead. Come on, Strider, get with the times. <laughs> it's it's trying Keep to being die, awesome. but it's bye bye. Uh, <laughs> having a hard time dying. <laughs> it's dead, dead. You hear me? Dead. It, it's zombie wear, man. <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, j Jazz is trying to to bring it back to life really, really hard. Strider, some people just can't let go. You can't be an enabler. <laughs> you you got to know when to let go. Come on, man. <laughs> no, man. You, you see, it's what you understand. I'm going to buy him like a Lutris cloak, you know, like a boxing cloak when they get into the ring. He, he can wear that <laughs> next week while he's surrounded by everything else. Good brilliant. <laughs> just have...